Welcome to a new video on my home automation and Node-RED playlist. If you follow my channel for a longer time, you might have seen this video about slightly more than one year ago about a service called Gbridge that I used to integrate my devices with Google Home. So it allowed me to, you know, Google Home to talk to some of my devices that were on my local network and uh, basically just do it with uh, MQTT messages. And this was a really nice service. Uh, it was run by a few enthusiasts who basically created this service and then maintained it. And um, uh, they also operated like a, a, a subscription model. So if you wanted more than four, four devices, you can subscribe. And I actually been subscribing and I've been paying them that uh, monthly fee for all this service. And if you decided to use the same service, you probably know that this service is no longer available because it was due to shut down at 15th of March this year. And to be honest, I should have released this video probably one or two months earlier because while well, obviously the, the question is, what do I do? So if, this, if I've been using Gbridge, what is the next uh, you know, thing that I should go to? And actually, if you look at the community, I think there were a couple of... Uh, threads around what else is available what you can choose what are the different options and that's when i started looking around and i found the nora which is the node red home automation and that's actually what i decided to migrate my solution to so i'm using nora at the moment to integrate all my devices to google home so in this video i'm just going to focus on how this nora works but if you read these uh, threads you can see some other um, options around there and actually this is something that was also mentioned in one of the threads that gbridge was a um, sort of like a, I, i'm not sure if this is the best uh, classification but it was like a cum community run service and actually nora is the same thing so you are connecting to or you are subscribing to a service and you are using that to connect your node red instance to you know google home so that the two can talk to each other so there is no guarantee that nora is going to you know be there for um forever and it may shut down uh, in the same way as uh, gbridge did or maybe you know nora becomes a paid service because at the moment it's free of course you can donate money to the authors but uh, you can use it for free so definitely keep this in mind i think my decision to go for nora was um, because that's the one that i read about the most and actually when i migrated my solution uh, about one month ago before it was due to shut down i didn't have an awful lot of time so i was trying to do something which is very simple to do and actually even though i have a lot of devices and if you look at the flow it might look a little bit daunting but that's because you have to create one you know box for each of your device you have and uh, i just have a special integration how i integrated some of my devices that are on a plc so i'm i'm reading you know modbus data and sending modbus data so there is a lot of logic involved which you you don't have to worry about because that's specific to my solution but i think overall i probably spent one or two hours uh, on basically setting up the nora integration and that was pretty much it so it wasn't really painful so and this is why i would i would recommend you know using this or at least considering this in this video i'm not going to go into every single little details i'm just going to you know give you um, a, a rough idea how to how you get started and and what are the options that are available there so first of all what you need to install in uh, node red is you go to the palette manager and there is a nora module which is called uh, Nodad Contrib Nora. As you can see, it's still like 0 0.033. So it hasn't reached to, let's say, a, you know, official 1.0 version, but nevertheless, a lot of things work in it. And once you install, you get a bunch of nodes. And by looking at these nodes, we can pretty much tell what are the different uh, um, traits that are supported in Nora at the moment. So, and then basically these are the different devices that you can do. So you can support blinds, you can uh, use scenes. So these are the scenes that you will set up in the Google Home app. Actually, I'm not using these, uh, so I don't really know how these scenes work. 
your speakers, switch, thermostats, outlets, lights, garage, and locks. And I have to say, most of them are re really similar, like, you know, the switch and the outlet and the light in the garage are pretty much the same thing. Of course, with the light, depending on the model, you can, you know, specify brightness and, and uh, color temperature or, you know, colors. But, um, you know, a switch is, is an on-off thing the 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 garage is is an on off an outlet is an on off um the, the small differences between is that for example the garage is open close so it's just more natural that you say um you know google open my garage door instead of turn on my garage door which which would you know sound silly you know previously in gbridge you didn't have so many different devices but whenever you have this uh, configured device you had the option to specify what uh, traits that device listens to and here you just have different devices with predefined traits and um, to be honest i'm using blinds because i have blinds i'm using lights and and switches i don't think i'm using the outlets and the garage as well i don't have locks and i haven't set up any thermostats either because i don't have those and I think what I'm going to do yeah, is I'm going to show you how I set up a brand new device. So I have a planter here in my study. It's like an IKEA uh, planter thingy. And it has a light installed in it, which is um, controlled by a Sonoff Basic, which is running ESP Easy. So like a really old e version of ESP Easy. Of course, it's going to be very, very really similar with Tasmota. Uh, the difference would be, be that... Um, there will be different MQTT topics that you send the data to Tasmota and then you receive the status back. But that would be the only difference between the two. So I'm just going to scroll through all my devices that I have here and I'm just going to install a new one. Because it's a light, I think I'm just going to use the light um, even though it doesn't support, you know, dimming. Um, I don't think that there is any real difference whether it should be like a switch or a light. Of course, when you say to Google, like, you know, turn on the lights in room, then if it's a switch or an outlet, it doesn't get turned on only if it's a light. So that's probably the consideration that you should do. You double click on the device. Uh, let me just zoom in a little. So you double click on the device and then you have a couple of options. So first of all is the config. I have created my Nora config. Obviously, when you are starting new, you need to add, uh, click on add a new Nora config. You give it a name and then you have to specify a token. You get a token by visiting this site. I'm going to leave the URL in the video description in case you can't read this. And when you open this site for the first time, it's going to ask you to create an account. You can use Google or a GitHub account to associate with it if you don't want to create uh, something new but once you have registered and you have an account you are going to get a page which is very similar to this of course uh, i have devices as configured already so i have like a list of devices in here but for you it's going to be uh, pretty much an empty screen but you will get this really long uh, configuration well that's basically your token so you have to copy this entire string and that's what you paste into the token field. And that's it. And that would be your, you know, Nora config. So this is a new light. So I'm just going to give it a name. I'm going to say that it doesn't allow brightness control. And I want to specify what the on payload is. And because I'm using uh, ESP Easy and pretty much all the MQTT based devices, the on payload is usually one and the off payload is usually zero. And they are defined as a string because it's MQTT. Before I go any further, I just want to highlight this option here, which says if message arrives on the input, pass it for the output. And I've unticked this for all my devices. And by the way, it's unticked by default. And um, I unticked it because like more ESP Easy, Tasmota, and most of the devices, the way they work is that you change the status and then they are going to respond back the, you know, the new status. And if you allow the message to go through, I, I, I'm afraid that it's going to create like an infinite loop because then, okay, 
Google notice that something changed and it's going to pass through so that goes to your device and that's going to just report back the same status what it's already on while it might do on some um, firmware as it might not do on others but I think it's probably safer that you untick this one. So we have gone through the on and off payload and you can do a room hint here as well and I find this uh, particularly useful because you can already specify the room this device should go into. So once this device is created, it will be automatically in the room in the Google Home application. So you don't have to assign it to a room manually. So you just type the name of the room here and um, you can leave the other two unassigned. And that's pretty much it. And what we are going to do is we are going to put a debug node here and that's it and I'm going to deploy and once we have deployed then we will get a message which says connected and the actual state so at the moment this planter is off I'm now opening my Google Home app and we just have to wait until all the devices are loaded and I have loads of them so I just need to find my study which probably has some devices already yep that's my devices and we can see that I have two lights and I click here two lights so I have a planter and I have a study light the study light is what's uh, above me and that's uh, on at the moment and I can turn on the planter as well and let me just switch to debug mode and here we go so now we have received a message from this debug node and then the payload is true so I was expecting one and zeros instead of I got true but I think it's just something wrong with the editor so I just had to change it again because it was just showing me true or false like the you know the string true and the string false so I just changed it to zero and one now so let me just deploy it again and hopefully this is going to be fine now so let me check yep and if I look at my phone again if I turn off the planter now we are go, go, getting zero and one and that's what I wanted so now what we see what the message comes out from the uh, from the device so as as soon as you put the no what whatever node Nora node here on your flow and then you de uh, deploy that device would automatically appear in the home app so after you have deployed you can go to the home app and you should be able to see the new device appearing in the home app and i think that's the best way to test it to see how each of these devices work just create them put a message like a debug node and then start playing around with it in your home app and then you can see what sort of messages it sends out you know for the light it's very easy but for a thermostat or maybe like a lock it could be a little bit different so now that we get this sorted, the next thing that we need to do is we need to send out the MQTT message to this uh, Sonoff, which is running ESPZ. And I have already done that. So I'm just going to find the code here, which does the... Th uh, okay, it's not this one. Yeah, so that's my planter light. So as you can see, it accepts 0 or 1. And that's the MQTT out. So I'm just going to go back and put this MQTT out. Let me move this around and that should be it. I deployed the changes and the MQTT is connected as well. So let me turn on the planter light in Google Home. And now we can see that the light has turned on. And if you turn off, the light has turned off. And that's all it takes to control your light using Nora. So it was very simple. And of course, you know, it would be the same thing with the switch or with an outlet. So now the next thing that we need to do is we also need to somehow, you know, feed the changes back into Google Home. So Google Home would know what state this planter is if you happen to change it from another, you know, source. Maybe Node-RED changes it. And for this, I'm just going to go back. And um, as a matter of fact, I think um, ESP Easy reports the changes on the very same topic. So 
so I'm just going to feed this in to the planter to the Nora node and because it understands that the you know the on payload is one and the off payload is zero it's going to update the the Google Home app accordingly so let me deploy the changes now both of my MQTT nodes are collect connected so I'm going to go back to that piece of code that we just say, seen uh, previously so before I do any changes, let me, let me look at the Google Home app. So now we can see that the planter is off. So if I send a message, so now the light is on. And I think we need to go out because it doesn't get updated so quickly. And you may have to wait a little while because the what I noticed that the Google Home app is not absolutely live. So it doesn't show the latest changes like within just a few seconds. But now if I go into my lights now I can see that the planter is on. And with this you have closed the loop and you can control the your devices using Google Home and you can also feed the status back to Google Home so it shows the current status. And if I use the Google Home to turn it off, of course it works. And just to prove that it's uh, also very easy to do the same with Tasmota, this is one of my old Tasmota devices which is not connected at the moment. I just used this part of the flow in a previous video. So when you want to make the changes to the relay state, you send the message to this topic. So it's common slash the name of the device slash power. So again, that was a son of basic as well. So there is only you know one output, so one power. So that's where you send either your ones and zeros and the so that would be the topic which it gets sent to from the Nora node and that's the status topic where the updates are going to be sent so that's the one that you feed into the Nora node so again two MQTT topics this goes in and this goes out uh, well into the Nora node and out from the Nora node and that's pretty much it and as I said, the documentation for all these is fairly uh, detailed here. So you can see that what is the data that is expected by, let's say, a blind or a scene or a speaker. And of course, you can see what else is um, actually supported by all of these devices. So based on this, you can make um, an educated guess which one is going to be the best for your particular situation. For example, if you can't decide if something should be outlet or should be like a switch. But what I would suggest if you are starting with a new device type, just create it, put it into the debug, and then use the Google Home app to make changes, see what sort of messages are sent out. And these are the exact same messages that you need to send in on the other side. So, you know, Google Home can update the status based on, you know, what your device is doing. So I think that would be the Nora integration in a nutshell. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.